Hello and welcome. My name is Miss Barbara with the Greensboro Public Library. And today for the tin cooking, we're going to make one of my favorite recipes, naan. Naan is a slightly leavened bread that is more like a pita or a flat bread. It's chewy and very delicious, nice to eat by itself with spices and seasonings on it or to go along with soups or stews. We can also, one of my favorite things to do with it is to take leftover naan and make pizzas the way that you would make a flatbread or a pita pizza. So I posted the recipe card and let's get started. The first thing I did was my yeast. You want to take your warm water and sugar. Stir it a little bit to dissolve the sugar. You can also start out with cool water and the sugar in a bowl and microwave it for about 10 or 15 seconds. You want it to be warm so that it will activate the yeast, but if it's too hot, it will actually kill the yeast. And so maybe 20 or 30 seconds if your microwave is on a lower setting. But I'd go in increments of 10 and just check it. Then you sprinkle the top with your yeast and put it in a warm place. I usually turn my oven on and sit it on top of my oven. And the yeast will start what's called blooming and they'll make a really spongy, puffy looking top layer. And when that top layer gets really tall, about 10 or 15 minutes and looks foamy, then your yeast is ready to use. You also want warm whole milk and full fat Greek yogurt, plain. You don't have to use Greek yogurt, but the thicker your yogurt, the better. And you can make non without dairy products if you don't do dairy, but the dairy products really help the texture and flavor of the non. Then I've got my flour and salt. And that's pretty much all you need for basic naan. So I'm gonna mix my wet ingredients together in the bowl. gently it doesn't have to be perfect but the better you mix this the fewer lumps you'll try and get out later salt which are all our dry ingredients and I'm just going to make a little well in the middle of my flour and pour in my wet ingredients. After that just start mixing. You're going to want a dough that forms a solid ball and isn't too wet. So it's going to take 
a while to mix. You're done mixing in the other bowl when your dough forms a shaggy ball and you've picked up most of the flour and other ingredients in the bowl. But this is still too wet and needs a bit more flour. It's quite sticky. So what we're looking for is to knead the dough to produce some of the gluten and to also add a little bit of flour into the dough and make it less sticky. Start out with a tablespoon or so of flour spread on a clean surface. I almost always use the back of a large cutting board and just work the dough. Knead it, pick up some of the flour, for about five minutes. So that is the texture we're looking for. It's nice and springy still, but also not sticky and wet, leaving pieces of itself all over our board and our hands. So I'm just going to shape it into a ball and then I've got a bowl with some olive oil on it. You can do whatever oil you like, but make sure your bowl is nice and oil. You also want to pick some of that olive oil up and smear it around your bowl so that when this rises, it doesn't catch the side, stick and deflate. And then, Put it back in your warm spot. Usually I cover it with saran wrap and a lightweight hand towel so that the hand towel traps the heat in. So you're gonna divide your dough into eight. And it's okay when you first start doing this, your dough deflates, that's fine. And once you have your dough balls, you're gonna roll them out. If you don't have a rolling pin handy, 
you can use a glass. Just try and make sure the sides aren't too sloped or have some kind of ridges or pattern in them. The smoother the glass, the better it'll act like a rolling pin. You can also use a jar that's clean on the outside. If you have something left over from jam or spaghetti, it's okay to be innovative. Not everyone these days bakes or has a rolling pin, and that's all right. Moving my glass around because I want the shape to kind of stay as round as possible. It's okay if you start getting some edges, but at the same time, if it starts getting wildly out of shape, it'll be harder to make a pizza out of later. If you're just going to bake it, that's fine. So you want all of your dough to try and be as flat as possible and as thin as possible. So that's pretty good. So I've got my rolled out naan and my pizza toppings. I've got some tandoori chicken that I made. It's really simple for this one. I borrowed a lot of help from the grocery store. I shredded a rotisserie chicken and took some of that leftover chicken and mixed it with some tomatoes that were canned that I drained and crushed up and also a jar of pre-made tandoori sauce. I've got cilantro chopped up, green onion. You can also use really thinly sliced red or white onion, but I like the green onion on the pizzas because it cooks and gets soft really fast and it's not got a super, super strong oniony taste. And then some of my favorite vegetables, I've got some chopped cooked spinach that I've defrosted from frozen and squeezed all the liquid that I could get out of. If you don't squeeze a lot of the liquid out, it will make your pizza soggy. And then I've got eggplant and zucchini. And both of those are also chopped very thin. It doesn't have to be paper thin, but if you're not gonna use pre-cooked vegetables, for something like the pizzas, they need to be as thin as you can make them so that they're done by the time the dough is done. And in this last bowl, I have melted some butter and several cloves of small minced garlic. And I microwave them together to melt the butter and to also cook the garlic a little bit so that it doesn't have that very raw taste because these cook in about 10 or 15 minutes, which is often not enough time for the raw taste to go away from garlic, same as with the onions. So I'm gonna brush each of these with some of the garlic butter. Make sure you get it all around because this is what's gonna keep your pizza moist and help it cook. It doesn't take a lot, just spread it. And then I'm going to start with my vegetables. I'm going to put some green onion on it. Don't add too many vegetables to each individual pizza. One of the mistakes people make when they do pizzas, especially small pizzas, is that they put a lot of toppings on and then it takes a long time for the pizza to cook or everything gets soggy trying to cook on top of the dough. You can put a variety of toppings on, but not lots and lots and lots 
Or you could just put about the same amount of one type of topping. spinach. I'm going to break it up into little clumps. It'll spread out a little bit as it warms up as well. You can use fresh spinach for this if you have it. That would be tasty and you would just layer it along with the other vegetables. cilantro down on this layer as well. Some people like their herbs on the top. Personally, I like mine on the bottom so that they don't burn and the flavor gets more into the ingredients in the crust. Once my zucchini Eggplant. Besides the cheese for me, it's going to be the chicken. And then my last layer is cheese. And that's it. These are ready to go into the oven. I usually cook them on 350 because I want them to bake all the way through for the dough. And I want them to have time to get good and crispy on the bottom. Generally it takes around 10 to 15 minutes, but it depends on your oven. Every oven cooks a little bit differently. So just keep an eye on it after about 10 minutes. 